Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here today with you. Uh, I'm Arek Kaczynski. I'm working at uh, Allegro. Uh, this is our biggest uh, Polish e-commerce site uh, for business, for customers, a platform for, for buying stuff for everyone. Uh, today, I would like to talk with you about data structures with Avro. And so, let's start. A uh, short agenda for today. First, what's Avro? I would like to get, give you a brief introduction for this uh, topic. Uh, then, how we're using Avro in our data platform. Then, I would like to share you three things we, uh, we failed and learned to how to manage. Then, two use cases uh, where Avro structure are really uh, useful in our uh, data stack. Okay, so what is Avro? Avro is a, a data serialization system. It's a Apache project, uh, and Avro is uh, for giving you information a structure. First of all, you can with Avro you can define schema of your of your information. So uh, you can say uh, this is a string field, this is a integer field. We'll see an example later. But uh, this is a schema, uh, as we know from the databases or from the XML structures. This is uh, this is the same thing. So if we're talking, with, if we've got schema, uh, we can start uh, thinking about data contract. And this data contract is between someone who's producing Avro messages and someone who's uh, consuming these Avro messages. So this is a, a baseline to connect these uh, sides of the pipeline. This pipeline we will show later. And if we are talking about data contract, uh, we've got to uh, somehow define this schema. Uh, in Avro, schema defining is quite easy uh, because you are defining schema in JSON format. JSON is quite, uh, quite popular and everyone uh, can, can write some structures in JSON. What's more, it's quite easy to maintain, to, uh, to get reviews, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, What's more, schema evolution. Uh, with time, when your project go live, and when uh, and when uh, your pro your uh, your requirements, for example, from business side, are growing, you've got to somehow manage evolving uh, uh, evolution of your schema, and this is natively uh, available in Avro. Uh, what is very important about this data format, this uh, data transformation, uh, this. Uh, Mm, this method of uh, presentation information, data presentation. Uh, Avro is widely adopted across many tools of uh, big data ecosystem. Uh, to name just a few of them, it's uh, Hadoop, native Hadoop, uh, Hive, uh, Hive with uh, SQLs, uh, it's a Spark, uh, Presto. There's a lot of tools, so it's quite easy to interchange uh, data in Avro format across many systems. We will see example of this uh, later. Uh, what's very important, uh, Avro uh, is exchanged between points in binary, and for the long term storage is also stored as a binary uh, uh, format. So you can reduce frame size uh, on the wire, uh, which is also very important uh, for the nowadays applications. Uh, okay, uh, uh, I said before that uh, our schema is quite uh, easy to, to maintain. It's easy to, do, to describe. Here's a here's example how, uh, how our schema looks like. And uh, the, uh, the most important thing that this schema is uh, uh, divided into uh, two, uh, two sections. First section on the top of the schema. Uh, uh, the first uh, first part of the schema, where we've got type, name, namespace, and doc, is uh, something like a uh, uh, FQDN uh, for the for the schema. Uh, this is uh, the the main identification uh, main identificator of the schema Avro. Uh, we are using this part and the name and the and name and the namespace uh, to make uh, uh, schemas unique across all uh, uh, whole, uh, our whole ecosystem our whole data ecosystem. The second part of, the, uh, of this schema is uh, strictly related with the fields which we would like to define in our data structure. Here, in the example, we've got two, two kinds of fields. It's a field ID with a type integer, and the second uh, field with the name, uh, uh, username, and this is type uh, string. Uh, what's more important, all fields uh, in schema, in Avro schema, 
uh, you can also additionally you can uh, describe by documentation field, which is very important. Uh, we will uh, show how we how you can use this on the uh, next stages on the of this presentation. So this is a, a basic average schema. Uh, this is how it looks like. We know briefly how uh, how Avro, uh, what we can do with Avro. So uh, how we are using Avro in our data uh, in our data stack. Uh, this is a big overview over uh, our data our data platform. Uh, it's nothing unusual on this uh, on this scenario. Uh, we've got a uh, messaging platform in the center uh, of, the, of the communication. It's based on the Hermes. Uh, it's our, uh, Hermes is a, a front-end and back-end for the uh, Kafka, which is underneath. Uh, so we've got messaging platform based on the Hermes and Kafka. Kafka, you probably know. Uh, it's uh, to store message. Uh, Kafka is a, a classical pops-up uh, solution. We are storing data in topics and information are flowing uh, uh, through the topics between someone who is producing message and someone who'd like to consume this message. So we've got messaging platform in the, in the middle, in the heart of, uh, of a data platform system. Then we, can, uh, then we are pulling this data to the uh, Hadoop platform, to our internal uh, Hadoop cluster. On the other hand, all messages are going to the uh, to this point, this is a word of microservices. So we are exchanging the same data produced in this point, uh, our JSON, uh, between at least two, uh, two endpoints. One endpoint is a Hadoop cluster, the second one is a microservices word. And uh, how it works, how, where, where this Avro is used. Uh, there's a very important block on this screen. There's uh, something what is called schema registry. Uh, it's a place where we are putting all our uh, schemas uh, that our developer produced to produce some messages on the stack. So whenever, uh, whenever we are trying to push new messages to the stack, we are registering schema, schema registry. We will come back to this uh, part of uh, uh, graph later. And user can send messages based on the Avro or JSON. This is... Uh, uh, this is uh, this is decision of the user, and uh, based on this, user can send uh, messages to the messaging platform. But where is the whole magic uh, related with the Avro and with the schema registry? The magic is that that uh, is there where whenever user trying to send message to the messaging platform, he can send message in Avro or JSON format. But uh, during the uh, receiving message by Hermes. All messages are validated against schema that user had to provide uh, earlier during the application development. So whenever message is put to the messaging platform, it must be validated against schema that is uh, previously registered in schema registry, and the schema is also checked. This is the this is the something we will uh, discuss later. So this is a big overview. Oh, we've got also we are uh, also a big query on the screen. We will talk in, on the use cases sections about this. So uh, uh, we said from big picture how our uh, uh, how our architecture looks like. But now let's face uh, let's see how microservices can uh, microservices world can benefit from the Avro schemas. As we mentioned um, uh, in the beginning. Every message must be validated against schema registry and schema uh, holded in this uh, in this storage. Uh, it's a simple uh, web uh, HTTP application that is serving schemas uh, over the HTTP. And whenever message uh, is coming to the to the data platform, this is in this place. Uh, this message is validated, okay, and it must be. Uh, must be okay, must be good for, from the perspective of the, of the schema. So this message is uh, message arrived to the messaging platform, and then how users, how consumers uh, use, uh, how consumers can uh, get this message and uh, be sure that uh, this message is okay, and they're reading exactly what, uh, what consumer produced. All microservices uh, on the consumer side, this is this place, uh, I hope so. It's uh, visible for you. 
this is this place where consumers are uh, getting these messages, they are also using schema registry to fetch our schema, and there is no need to exchange any additional information about the data structure. So whenever developer creating application, first of all, if you'd like to, if if developer would like to uh, use uh, data platform and use data from the messaging platform, first of all, he is pulling uh, schema from schema registry, building application based on the schema on this schema, and this is uh, easily plugged into Java ecosystem. Uh, and based on that, and based on that, uh, developers just uh, doing what they what they've got to do, and they don't need to think about how my data structure looks, uh, how can I, how I've got to struggle with the, with this data structure, how the producer uh, described this message. So, uh, once defined schema on the development side is widely used, at least in two points. Uh, we'll get we'll bring the third point uh, in the in the minute. Uh, schema is used in two points. First, in the, mess in the uh, moment of message production from the, consumer s from, from the producer side. And on the other hand, whenever uh, uh, our message is uh, consumed on this left side of the, uh, of the graph, against, again, uh, our schema uh, is used to read message and the content of this message. So this is the microservices world with schema, uh, with our schema and how it works. Uh, but uh, as we mentioned on, on this graph, there's also an uh, analytics world uh, for this whole, uh, whole, uh, whole part. And this is the place uh, uh, where the analytics world uh, starting to benefit from the, uh, from the other schemas. Uh, we had to evolve from JSON world so every message in the beginning of almost three years uh, ago uh, was stored in JSON in our data platform. Then we decided to move to the other world. And how this transformation benefits for our uh, analytics? Uh, this is an example of the history and the actual state of the data structures in our Hadoop platform. Uh, first of all, you can see the, uh, the first definition of table. It's a, a definition of tables from the Hive Metastore. Uh, first definition is based on the JSON, so all messages are in the plain string. Message uh, is encoded in, message is stored as a JSON in a one line string uh, in the table. And on the, uh, on the lower part of this, uh, of this screen, you've got uh, table based on the other definition. So, when developer creating schema, it's not only used to produce and consume this message, but also the schema is used for analytics world to exchange this information about how, how my data looks like. And this is one of the biggest benefits uh, from, from Avro. It's not only used for the Java application, but also used for uh, permanent storage for Hadoop platform for BigQuery. We will talk about this later. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, I would like to show you that uh, I don't know if you remember the documentation field in the Avro, uh, Avro schema example. Uh, this is uh, in the third fourth col column. Uh, there is a comment field, and this is exactly what documentation where documentation is used. So, uh, when analytics would like when analyze uh, where analytics are going to to explore data. They've got, right now, they've got not only structures, not only field names, etc. cetera. They, do not, they don't need to uh, figure out what, uh, what the author uh, tried, to, uh, tried to say, but they've got explicit data schema with uh, types, uh, with field names, uh, with documentation to these fields. And this is a part where this whole data exploration part of data uh, is getting easier. Uh, this is example. Uh, previously, we got example how uh, how table definition looks like, and this is uh, example how analysis world change after switching from non-structurized world or JSON structures world uh, to to the other analytics. In the first uh, example, uh, we've got to use special uh, functions uh, on the Hive side uh, to extract fields from JSONs that were stored on the Hadoop. Uh, under uh, HDFS, and uh, in on the other ex and uh, lower examples, uh, we've got example of the same structure, 
but uh, hold in Avro uh, in Avro uh, uh, format. As you can see, uh, analyze. Okay, so uh, sorry for this delay. We are back online. Uh, so this is a change between uh, structures uh, data hold in in JSON format and data hold in the Avro format. I hope this uh, uh, change is quite visible. Uh, it's just reducing time to get your data uh, and data exploration. We can reduce time to, um, uh, to get to the real insight from, from, my from our data. But how to, how to achieve this uh, with the tools we've got fully available in open source and big data stack? Uh, whole magic uh, is uh, in here. Uh, this is the uh, one comment uh, which will uh, bring you uh, hold this magic to your data ecosystem. This is a table definition uh, for the Hive SQL, for the Hive Metastore. And what we are doing explicitly in this, uh, in this place, uh, first of all, we are telling Hive that we'd like to store our, our data as Avro. And what the second very important thing, we'd like to store our Avro data with the schema, which is hold in the HTTP server somewhere in your stack. And this is all. When you are, trans where you are, when you are producing messages in Avro, there's a very straight way to uh, achieve this state of, uh, of uh, holding data in your whole ecosystem. So this is the place, uh, probably, uh, if you'd like to uh, take some uh, 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 something from this presentation, this is probably the most important thing, that this is the place, the Hive Metastore is the place where you can define one, uh, one table definition uh, based on the one Avro schema, and all the magic is done, is done by for you. Uh, what's more, Hive Metastore is very popular uh, data catalog for whole uh, big data ecosystem, so this de table definition is not only used for the Hive, but it's also used for Spark, for the almost all of the Hadoop tools, which are uh, used uh, in, uh, in nowadays stack. Uh, what's more, uh, it's also compatible with Presto, uh, with Apache Ignite. Uh, you can probably even talk with, uh, uh, with uh, Hive Metastore, with Elasticsearch, with Druid. So this, day, this, uh, this place where you, the, the Hive Metastore is a very uh, powerful tool. And this is one of the examples how you can uh, benefit from the central meta catalog and storing data in, uh, in Avro structures. Okay, uh, everything is simple uh, on the slides, uh, but there are a few things you've got to um, uh, remember during this. Uh, this is something what we had to learn uh, during this whole uh, struggle with, uh, with the data transformation. Uh, one of them is to uh, create our own set of validators, of, sch of schema validators. This is something what is uh, embedded in our, in our internet, internal schema registry. Uh, those are small components that are responsible for, uh, for, oh, excuse me. Uh, those are the small, uh, small components that are responsible for, uh, uh, repairing uh, ecosystem imperfections. So uh, we've got a few uh, few validators. Uh, maybe for the uh, to show you uh, validators uh, schema validators. This is something I'd like to tell you about now. Are uh, hold in here in schema registry. So whenever a user is trying to uh, put new schema, uh, those validators are uh, run against uh, developer schema, and this uh, schema is checked if it's proper for our ecosystem. What we are checking? First of all, we are checking documentation. If all the fields, in, if in all fields, uh, you, decide, uh, you dis uh, describe it the doc documentation field. This is uh, not only for the developer, but also for the analytics during the data exploration uh, useful. Uh, what's more, we are checking also subject name. We are, uh, this is our protection against uniqueness of our schema across all ecosystem, whole ecosystem. And the uh, example of the field validators, we've got uh, something about 10, 12 validators on the production. This is uh, just an example. Uh, and the third uh, validator is a strictly technical validator. Uh, validator. Uh, 
um, responsible for uh, chain checking if you are just, if you are giving uh, if you are extend when you are extending your enum symbol uh, you've got to extend uh, you are you are uh, giving you are extending it only by adding new new definition to the enum field you are not changing the middle of the uh, of the enum uh, the structure of arbor is uh, that there that uh, enum symbols are stored uh, as in as integers uh, on the on the binary representation. So if you'd like to put something in the middle of the enum definition, uh, data context might might be changed uh, with time. So you've got to add only new elements of en uh, to enum at the end of the uh, of the list. So this is an example of validators. Uh, second lesson we we had to learn. Uh, yeah, give. Uh, uh, give tools for our developers. Uh, this is something what was uh, at the beginning missed uh, in our stack, and uh, we had to provide at least a uh, few things. The most, most important things are on the screen. So first of all, uh, there is an option to create a converter between uh, Java class and Avro schema in both ways. So whenever developer is trying to, to build something, if he firstly de describes his uh, his uh, uh, his data definition in the Java class, then this class can be converted to the Avro schema, and Avro schema can be put into schema registry. On the other hand, when a consumer is trying to to uh, read some data, he is getting Avro schema from the schema registry, and based on the um, based on the schema. Uh, just generating Java class and plug it in into his uh, Java application and hold on, uh, whole work uh, is done uh, just in the one place. And everyone talking with the same data definition and this is some, something what we can uh, starting to, what we can starting to, uh, to name as a data contract. Uh, we talked uh, something what was uh, in the first two slides. Okay, uh, there's no better way to show someone how it works by the example, and we created also example services for our uh, developers. So there was a full example of, a, of application, how to work with Avro, how to, how to write schema, how to deploy such kind of application on the production, and it was uh, uh, very, very useful for, uh, for, uh, for our developers. And uh, probably most obvious, but uh, sometimes uh, not not common. Uh, give uh, give people place uh, where where they can exchange information about what they are doing. Uh, that was also a place for us as our data engineers, uh, where we uh, get a lot of corner cases, and by this we uh, we could uh, prepare validators for the some unusual situations to. Uh, to get the data flow proper across all tools and all mm, uh, all places of our data platform. Okay, uh, prepare for exceptions. Uh, in the very first uh, draft of our solution, we treated all data and all schemas with the same policies, but in the real world, it's a uh, it's a fake. <laughs> so uh, we spent a lot of time to. Uh, we spent a lot of time to create exception policies on the uh, many places of the ecosystem. For example, there are some users that don't want to store data on the uh, central point in the HDFS. They just want to push data through the messaging platform. And, and for example, for uh, such kind of user uh, validation, all validators uh, are not proper. And this is, uh, this is something what consumes uh, a lot of time for us. Uh, yeah, this is something what we had to learn uh, with the time. Uh, okay, so right now we know a uh, few things about uh, what we learn, uh, but where is the real benefit of these uh, data structures? Of this, how after of this after after this whole work with the data data structures and uh, uh, managing data structures in our stack, where we can benefit from this? Uh, first example is related with uh, GT, uh, GDPR. Uh, you are probably uh, familiar with this uh, uh, European Union law. Uh, it's uh, against data privacy. It's related with uh, data pri privacy. 
Uh, one of the uh, biggest concern for us was the right to be forgotten. I don't know if you are familiar with this uh, law. This law uh, gives permission, uh, give law, uh, give uh, ability for users to say, hey, I'd like to be deleted from, your, from all your ecosystems. I don't want uh, to you to store any data about me. And uh, that was task for us as a data engineers team to, uh, to solve this problem on the uh, Hadoop platform. And Avro was a um, place where we could uh, uh, manage this problem. But how we achieve this? You probably remember the first uh, slides with the Avro schema, the example Avro schema. And this is a bit change, uh, Avro schema. Uh, we decided to, uh, so if, we, we, if our developers describe our data already, why don't use this information and extend Avro schema and add custom fields related with the personal data? Please keep in mind, this is only data definition. This is not data storage. This is data definition. So on the level of data definition, uh, we created additional fields uh, which are responsible for uh, storing what kind of data, uh, private data information is stored in some, uh, some topic with some data set with uh, with informations. We created uh, additional uh, field with the name user data type. Uh, here, here you've got two data types, user ID and user name. And how you are using this to remove all uh, personal data information for concrete, for specific user from our ecosystem, uh, we are indexing this data. So our, uh, our topics are data, are partitioned by two, two factors. First of all, it's a topic. Kafka topic, it's a, uh, it's a representation of table in Hive. And the second uh, level of uh, partitioning is uh, date. So through, we are going through the old data in the ecosystem, uh, and we know where uh, our developers put the specific personal data information based on the user data type. We are indexing and collecting all this information in the Hive index, in the Hive table. This is a, we are calling this an index table, a GDPR index table. And whenever user is coming to us and saying, please remove all my data from your ecosystem, we are just getting uh, information from the index. We are just searching for the user ID. We know where all this information related with the specific user are held because we built it index before. And based on this, uh, we are running job, which is responsible for just find uh, directly on the storage information related with the with the user and just clear these fields. And this is how we are how we uh, how we used uh, Avro to uh, make a, a low uh, make the GDPR happy for our company. Uh, this is one of the examples uh, uh, where we benefit from Avro. Uh, there's a second example, uh, a bit, a far more be easier, uh, but very important. Uh, we're trying to uh, get public cloud providers to expand our capabilities, especially in the data analytics fields. And we decided to use uh, Google Cloud Platform and use BigQuery for, for this, uh, for this uh, task. And uh, how we, where's the place? were Avro helping us to talk with the BigQuery. There's a very straightforward uh, uh, diagram for this. Uh, on the right side of the screen, uh, there's our uh, internal Hadoop cluster with the data. Uh, you know this, uh, this screen with the, uh, with the data definition, yeah? In the Hive, the, we've got uh, columns uh, which are defined through the Avro schema. We have, we, we've got types, we've got uh, documents, uh, descriptions, and how and uh, how we are transferring all this knowledge to the BigQuery to give analy analytics a uh, really uh, a good place to, to work. We are copying this data to the cloud storage. We are copying uh, uh, raw Avro files, and then we are loading this data into BigQuery. And on the BigQuery side, this is on the left side of the screen, we've got exact representation as we've got in our internal Hadoop cluster on site in our DC. So uh, Avro, in this scenario, was enabled for us to give same 
uh, user experience uh, in terms of uh, data structures, in data structures, uh, in our data center and in the BigQuery. Uh, the, you, to use BigQuery, the, our analysis, uh, analysts uh, just uh, need to change uh, the place where data are stored usually. And uh, the, the usually the SQLs are very similar between our uh, Hive or Spark SQL and the BigQuery. So uh, once known structures on our uh, data centers are same structures on the BigQuery side. So it was uh, a huge game changer for, for using BigQuery and the whole part with the Avro, uh, with the data structures, uh, I, I must say, uh, was a huge benefit in the terms of moving to the uh, to expanding uh, to to expand to the big query uh, and use uh, additional uh, capacity for the data computation. Uh, so uh, I think it's time to uh, 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 ask uh, to to get the ask question in the in the subject of, the, of this presentation. Is it worth it to fight with Avro? Uh, yes, uh, but I think we've got to widen this definition. Uh, it's not only to uh, uh, it's not only to worth invest in Avro, but it's worth to invest in any kind of data structures. Uh, later today and tomorrow, we will hear uh, we will hear a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, things about machine learning, data analytics, uh, data science, etc., and probably lower probably using data structures, uh, named structures with fixed types and uh, structures that are uh, easily used by your ecosystem users uh, will be a huge uh, enabler for uh, performing machine learning, data analysis, data scientists, uh, stuff, etc. So uh, in my opinion, Yes, it's worth uh, to uh, to go to the da data structure world. Uh, yeah, uh, it's worth it. Yeah, uh, thank you. That's all from me. If you've got any questions, I'm here for you. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Uh. Yeah. Hello. Um, so, did you investigate on any other row columnar format, uh, formats, RC formats, columnar formats, rather than row format like Avro, which is not so good in performance when it comes to analytics? Yeah, mm, great question. Uh, Avro isn't the best performance data format uh, uh, ever. Yes, you are absolutely right. Uh, but there's a balance between performance and uh, wide adoption across all tools uh, we are using. But let's, uh, and this is the, the main reason why we choose, to, why we choose Avro. Avro, there's a schema, it's, uh, uh, there's a wide adoption across uh, all tools. We know that performance isn't great, uh, but we are facing this, and uh, when we need a higher performance on the data side of the, uh, of the analytics, of the analysis world, uh, we are converting this Avro, Avro data to the, for example, Parquet or Org, depending on the use case. And we've got Avro schema, and this is fairly easy to convert this data structure to different one. And that was one of the uh, also that was also one of the uh, reasons why we choose Avro. We, this is this is our base form of the data, and then we can transform it to whatever we want to to boost our uh, analytics. Hello. Hello. Uh, which is the, the the software that you use for the schema registry, or you build it yourself? Uh, okay, uh, we've got our own implementation of schema registry, but there's an open source tool uh, that is coming that is written by Confluent, as I remember, and you can freely use this tool to to hold your schemas uh, in this uh, in this solution. What about what about Hermes? Uh, uh, could it be a substitute for Kafka Connect? Yeah, it might be. Uh, yes, it might be substitute for this solution. Um, Hermes is our tool. It's open sourced. Uh, 
so we can uh, look on the online how it uh, how it works. Uh, we created uh, probably we created uh, Hermes before the Kafka Connect, so <laughs> uh, this is uh, probably why we've got our own solution for uh, for the, to cover all this uh, thing related with Kafka. Uh, most important thing with the Hermes in our platform. Uh, is that that is uh, uh, whole communication is based on a HTTP protocol. It's fairly easy to use, so uh, we just hide in the the Kafka on the uh, underneath the the Hermes. This is uh, this is why we used uh, Hermes in this uh, solution. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, based on your experience, uh, when you are defining the schema. Do you prefer uh, define your schema from the scratch or using Java, Java class converters? Uh, it depends <laughs> on, on the use case. Uh, developers that are uh, uh, using uh, Java for, for, daily, for daily work, they are using usually converters. Uh, I'm a uh, non-Java uh, guy, so I'm defining schema uh, by myself. And it depends how what uh, what you uh, what you prefer. But if if you if if you want to recommend some way, uh, I mean, uh, in some places uh, they recommend you to use uh, to define your schema from scratch because some Java converters may don't do things yeah. well. So. Uh, yeah, uh, converting schema to the av to the Java class, and um, in both ways, uh, it's not so easy case as you mentioned, and we we've got a cost custom uh, converter uh, that is aware of our ecosystem and our data structures we would like to have on the production. So. Uh, if you are asking me about recommendation. Uh, if you are a Java developer, you use converters uh, from the from the stack or uh, build it by your, uh, by yourself. Uh, when you are someone who is fighting with the data structures on the uh, Hadoop ecosystem or analytics world, you probably like to use uh, schema defined by yourself. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if you'd like to ask me anything, I'm uh, uh, for these two days. Thank you for your time. Bye.